It's over, isn't it? Two Network promised that the finale of Steven Universe Future would answer everything. Well, I don't know about you guys, but there's still a lot of loose ends within the world of Steven Universe. What's up, guys? I'm Chris Carr. Let's talk about what Steven Universe Future didn't answer. Before we dive in, I want to give a shout out to all of our donors on Patreon, especially our super nerd sponsor of the day, Zachary Turner. Thanks to gems like Zachary, we get to keep talking tunes with you guys, even while our teeny tiny team has to work apart. We really appreciate it, y'all. If you want to chip in, head on over to our Patreon page and see if the donation tier works for you. We'll thank you with shout outs, swag, behind the scenes, and more. If you're a diehard Steven Universe fan looking to wear your fandom, then click that link to Tee Public in this video's description. Lastly, since we're talking about what Steven Universe Future left unsaid, there are spoilers in this video. Why are you watching this if you haven't finished the show? Go! Go! Watch it now! Good morning, Steven. One last routine before hitting the road? Yeah, I'll be sitting for a while. First and foremost, what was in the chest? Steven tries to open it to no avail, and then suddenly, without any explanation, that bad boy is open in Steven Universe the movie? How? What was in it? Was this just some stupid visual that the writers tossed in to make us insane? Because if you look at the comments on any of our finale content, you'll know that everyone is losing their collective schniz. Was this just some Pandora's box metaphor? Like, now that he's got his feelings out there, they're out there and not contained? Like now that Steven has accepted his gemness, he has to come to terms with his humanity and his ability to change and grow? Ooh, just let me know what was in there, Rebecca! Rebecca! Speaking of things we never talk about, what happened to the big bads of the season? Bluebird, aka Ruby and Aquamarine, just team rocketed out of Beach City, vowing their revenge, only to not show back up for the finale. Same with Mean Lapis, who theoretically is still out destroying whole worlds, and the Steven Cactus is still wandering aimlessly around Beach City. I know that Bluebird was there to illustrate that you just can't win some people over, and that the various Lapis were there to show how much our Lapis has grown and changed, but I would have liked a bit more of a wrap-up when it came to these characters, even if it was just Cactus Steven chilling in Peridot's horticulture class. Do Ruby and Aquamarine ever let go of their hate? Or does their bond continue to strengthen over their disdain for Steven? Does Mean Lapis come to see Nice Lapis graduate from little homeschool? Is that Cactus Steven thriving with his blooms, making friends and stuff? Or is he still repeating all the passive-aggressive word vomit Steven was spewing? I know Rebecca Sugar has said she wants to give her characters some privacy, for now. But how fun would it be to just get some shorts of these guys to see where they ended up? Now while on the subject of villains, let's discuss Jasper. I know a lot of fans were not happy with how things were left for Steven's foe, turned unhinged mentor, turned devoted subject. Steven had spent ages trying to convince Jasper that she should come to Little Homeschool and learn more about assimilating to Earth culture. Jasper had zero desire to do this, as well as zero respect for Steven. Always leaning into those unhealthy instincts, it's only after Steven gem murders her that Jasper thinks of Steven as a strong, capable leader. Jasper tries to journey with Steven first to Homeworld, devoting herself to her diamond, and then tries to come on his cross-country Karawacki and self-discovery tour, and Steven denies that request as well. Jasper's biggest issue has always been her immensely low self-esteem. She hates being from Earth, since she was always told what a dump the planet was, and the fact that she was from that dump's worst kindergarten was horrible. She failed during the war. She failed to protect her diamond. She's a soldier without a commander. So while I'm happy she isn't tagging along with Steven, taking orders from a new diamond, I wish she had come to that conclusion on screen, knowing that she could choose her own path. That does appear that Jasper is participating in Little Homeschool finally, which truly is a huge shift from the start of the season. But what's her trajectory? What was the point of getting her there if we don't see how this form of education and sort of deprogramming changes her? It felt very indie movie ending with Jasper. It's not about what she gets from Little Homeschool, it's about getting to Little Homeschool. And while that is a big change for her, it didn't give satisfying closure to this incredibly complex character. Frankly, what I want now is a Jasper spinoff. Oh, I do like this fan theory that the My Diamond thing is more so just a sign of respect, though. Farewell, My Diamond. Oh. Like Vegeta continuing to call Goku Kakarov. Another thing I will totally allow myself to believe. My Diamond can do as he pleases. Wait, what? It was also left pretty ambiguous in the series as to whether or not Volleyball, aka Pink Pearl, ever had her eye healed. As Redditor Sally the Human pointed out, Volleyball's crack was visible at the beginning of the episode, even when we could see her at opposite profile. And once on the beach after everything happens, this crack seems to have gone away. This could just be an animation goof. 
after all. Steven Universe hasn't always been the most consistently animated series, but this missing crack gave fans hope that Volleyball had healed from her trauma. In the episode Everything's Fine, the animators tried to hide that eye the way sitcoms try to hide pregnant actresses. Here, put this plan over the bump! If you go back and watch frame by frame, though, you'll notice that Volleyball still does have a crack over her eye. But why hide the entire thing? Did they not feel like animating it? Did she heal somewhat? Did she not heal at all? Steven Universe Future was all about addressing and working through trauma. And since Volleyball's injury couldn't heal until she addressed the psychological damage she suffered, I think it's reasonable to expect some sort of closure here. After all, she definitely talked things out way sooner than Steven did. Speaking of owning up to your own feelings, does Bismuth ever let Pearl know that she has a crush on her? I love that Bismuth at least is dropping hints when she has Pearl TA her blacksmithing class. Oh, you know, I just love making wedding armor and look at me making it specifically for a pearl. <laughs> Side quest, everyone is just headcanoning that Yellow Pearl and Blue Pearl are getting hitched, right? That can't just be me. Look at how proud Yellow is in that armor. Oh, it's so cute. Clearly, Bismuth asking Pearl to TA is a golden opportunity to get more face time. But has she properly said what's going on in her heart? I'm mostly just mad because I really, really wanted to see these two fuse even more than Lapis and Peridot. Which I know, I know, Lapidot shippers, you're very upset you didn't get that fusion either. And while we're on the subject of fusions, I honest to goodness thought we'd see the diamonds try their hand at it, giving us the most giant, giant woman ever. Ugh, huh? say lovey. Something that just seemed odd to me was Greg moving into the beach house. Yes, yes, I know it makes a nice poetic bow on Steven taking off and Mr. Universe settling in, but had it honestly never occurred to anyone that Greg should live with them in the house he built? That's not a bad idea. Dude, I was joking. Sure, things were really awkward between him and Pearl for years, but they could have made it work for Steven's sake. Greg didn't want to intrude on Steven's gem training and life as a gem, but it seems really weird that no one ever at least played with the idea of, hey, let's all live together. Move out of your van, dude. Furthermore, now that Greg has seen how the lack of normalcy affected his son, and he's made the choice to move out of his van and into a more traditional home, Will he reach out to his parents? Again, it seemed odd that we had an entire episode devoted to these people and never get any payoff in seeing them or learning more about their falling out. Now, I assumed that Greg has to have some sort of relationship with his parents since he had access to the DeMeo barn this whole time. We learn about that when his cousin Andy shows up. He and Andy are able to mend their relationship. Heck, Andy came to Ruby and Sapphire's wedding and is even flying with Nephrite in the episode Guidance. If this DeMeo could get on board with the seemingly hippie lifestyle of gems, as Andy put it, then couldn't Greg's parents do the same? Wouldn't they want to see their grandkid? I mean, that's pretty stinking traditional. The unopened letters from Greg make it look like he's attempted to reach out to his folks. So I want to know what the deal was on their end. Steven, it was horrible. Do you know how old I was the first time I had a taco? <sighs> Too old. A nice little button on the end of Future was seeing the return of Pumpkin. Pumpkin had been noticeably absent ever since the Steven Universe movie, and the creative team weren't forthright in letting fans know what happened, only saying that pumpkins, even magical ones, can't be around forever. So, cool. That's dark. Pumpkin living on a farm or something? Say Claude. Claude. <laughs> oh, but then lo and behold, Pumpkin's in the finale! And not just Pumpkin. There are other little sentient squashes too. Did Steven animate more gourds? Or did Pumpkin somehow get busy? <gasps> did Pumpkin hook up with the cactus Steven and make a litter of produce? Perhaps these are little seedlings that Pumpkin nurtured into tiny plant babies to care for. Some have even speculated that that's not the pumpkin we know and love, but rather Pumpkin's offspring, an heirloom heir. While I was thrilled to see this plant pet show back up, it opened up a weird can of worms of questions about produce reproduction. My big question, y'all, and I know I can't be the only person wondering this, what is Onion? Like, what, what is that kid? This eternal child that is seemingly indestructible and has always been a weird addition to the show with little to nothing explained about him. Was it all just for laughs and for the creep factor? Or was there ever going to be a rhyme or reason to Vidalia's son? Now these are just a few of the things I was wondering about after the finale. But what I wanna know is what questions you guys have. Let me know what loose ends you're still pulling at in the comments below. Thanks again to all of our donors on Patreon, to TeePublic, and to all of you Steven Universe fans who found our channel. If you like what you heard, I'd love it if you subscribed and hit that bell. Thank you so much for watching, y'all. See you, Space Cowboy.